Sheffield United's season didn't begin as many expected. It might have been different had Andy Walker evaded the challenge of Andy Bernal ten minutes from time. Bernal was sent off for the professional foul, but United could do nothing with the free kick. Two minutes later, Reading player manager Mick Gooding found his new signing, Welsh international Paul Bowden, overlapping down the left. Bowden provided just the sort of cross the other joint manager, Jimmy Quinn, doesn't miss. We were too complacent, said United's manager Howard Kendall. Letting have the corner. In it comes. Jimmy Quinn! What a great goal! Reading lead by a goal to nil in this Coca-Cola tie. Wodobchek brings it forwards. Oh, he slipped there. This could let in John Williams. He's away. There's not many men coming in for him. Can he take a shot? He has! It's a goal! Wickham won. Reading won. John Williams has done it for the Blues. Goals were never a problem at Portman Road last year, and Ipswich quickly rediscovered the habit. Tony Vaughan headed them in front, but there were wide open spaces in the Ipswich penalty area. Paul Bowden arrowed over the cross, and Lee Nogan was left all alone to equalise. But in the last minute of the first half, Reading's realistic chances evaporated. Alex Mathie just onside. It's not just a penalty for Ipswich, it's a professional foul by Bobby Mikhailov. The Bulgarian number one was sent off. With no reserve goalkeeper among the subs, Australian defender Andy Bernal took over. Everyone expected Steve Sedgley to beat him with the penalty, but he only just managed it. And the embarrassed goalkeeper early in the second half was Ipswich Town's Richard Wright. He gets the final touch. But Reading's ten men and their part-time goalkeeper were running out of luck. Bernal was caught off his line, and Vaughan's header looped in. You couldn't blame the goalkeeper for the fourth as the Reading defence stood and admires Summers' cross, dispatched by Maurizio Tarico. It was 5-2 at the finish, substitute Jamie Scowcroft turned and beat Bernal from the edge of the area. So far this season, here's Rick Goodwin. The Reds went in front with a superb goal from Darren Sheridan on 24 minutes. Sheridan was only in the side because Clint Marcel, the Trinidadian international, was away on World Cup duty. Eight minutes before the break, it was 2-0. Neil Thompson's ball found Andy Little, and the Scottish under-21 international was fortunate to score as the ball cannoned off him into the back of the net. Neil Redfern almost clinched the points with a tremendous strike that crashed against the Reading bar. But any chance of a Reading recovery was dashed in the 79th minute when Little burst clear. Andy Bernal hauled him back and earned a red card in the process. But Little wasn't to be denied. Neil Thompson's corner set him up for Barnsley's third to clinch a win that leaves them flying high at the top of Division 1. Stoke City's bid to go top was jeopardised just seven minutes in. Reading's right back, Martin Booty, worked up some momentum down the right, evaded Ray Wallace and was then fouled by Ian Cranston, according to referee Alan Butler. Trevor Morley, starting his first game of the season, did just enough with his penalty. But Mike Sheron is the goal scorer supreme in Division 1 right now, from any distance. That was Sheron's fifth in four league games. And he was involved in what looked like being Stokes' winner. Sharon lays the ball back, and Richard Forsyth's 20-yarder is too good for goalkeeper Sal Bibbo. But Stoke couldn't make it four wins out of four. Three minutes later, Jeff Hopkins headed down for Paul Holsgrove to thump in Reading's equaliser. Uh, Stoke were a very difficult team to play against. Mickey Bell floats it in. Now might yet drop. It's there! And Wickham Wanderers take the lead. And away by Brown. D'Souza now he's got Williams up ahead of him. And D'Souza now sprinting ahead. 
and might be able to finish it. It might come for Williams. That's two. Sunday saw the first Thames Valley derby in 13 years between Reading and Oxford. The commentator is John Hell. It's been a positive start by Reading, and they have this corner rolled in by Mickey Gooding, who now lofts it across the edge of that Oxford penalty area. Knocked down by Burnell, and it comes here for Williams. Oh, Williams scores! Delightful lob from Martin Williams. It's knocked in here towards Trevor Morley. And the situation retrieved by the boot of Phil Whitehead, almost up to halfway, back again from Bowden. This could release Michael Jilts, who has searing pace. Bowden now, he's continued his run. Paul Bowden trying to set something up for Morley. 2 0. Typical Trevor Morley. Reading 2, Oxford 0. Lovely goal. Last season, Reading, they came here and beat West Brom in the Coca Cola Cup by four goals to two then had to return just a few days later but then were comprehensively beaten here in the league well they forced a free kick over on that far side Darren Kasky back in the side he's been left out for the last couple of games record signing at £700,000 from Tottenham Morley and Nogan the obvious target and it's come off the post and that's handled, and that's a penalty. And what a test for Albion's new goalkeeper, Paul Crichton. It's the experienced Trevor Morley. He blasts it home, and Reading take a two-minute lead. Kenny Brown going down the right. Holsgrove. Oh, he's uh, not far away. Ask you solid it's a super ball. Hamilton's cross, and the snake is in the middle. First real piece of quality from the home side. It's David Smith over on the far side. Nearly fell for Marden. It was Raven in the end who went with the shot, trying to make amends. This is Solido, nice little flick by him. This is Hunt. This is Groves. Just needs a touch of somebody. Vesky Solido missed it. Snakers hits it. He's just wide. But now being coming more and more into it. I'm trying to get something on that. Hammond was a little uncomfortable. Groves knocks it back in. It's fallen for Hunt here. He's finished it. All sorts of confusion at the back for Reading. And a really good spell of pressure by the home side. Even is off the field. Receiving some treatment, the big centre half. On oh, Pesky Solido was in with a real chance there. No offside. Oh, he's hit the post. Oh, how unlucky. The match winner on his day, Kevin Donovan. It's a super ball forward to Pesky Solido. He's able to pick it up as well. Here he goes. Went for the low finish. <laughs> Forward by Holmes, came off Mick Gooding. First time ball back in again by Donovan. Pesky Solido comes out to this right hand side and he does well. Slips it in for Andy Hunt. First time shot. Oh, what a magnificent goal! Super run by Pesky Solido on this right hand side, but how about that for a finish? Scooping the ball into Nicky Hammond's top right hand corner. A quite exquisite piece of finishing by Albion's leading scorer. 
Kevin Donovan, former Huddersfield and Halifax town player, Yorkshire born and bred. Here's the little Canadian, Pesky Solido. And here he goes to the byline, gets the cross in. Oh, it's hit the woodwork again. It's a good ball, Pesky Solido. Tried to find Hunt, he's been given the ball straight back though. Here he is. Oh, and he's uh, gone wide with the effort. He looked for a deflection there. Boot up field. Quinn caused the problems, and Holmes blasts the ball away. And Pesky Solido has got uh, Holsgrove and all sorts of problems here. Hunt. Oh, he's done it. <laughs> Neatly done. An element of arrogance about it, really. But the hat trick and the Pesky Solido Hunt partnership does the business. Mika. Once again, it's Mika who's found the room. It's a header and a goal. Parkinson. Now Brown. Morley was looking to get in. It's uh, a bit of a scramble. Crichton's got it. Looked like there's a use of a hand in there. And Jimmy Quinn has uh, had a little clash with Paul Crichton. Referees played the advantage there. That was a real let off for West Brom. Pesky Solido hunts his offside. He can't play him in, so he goes on his own. No foul. Brown goes for the return. Snakers couldn't block out the tackle. There's some space here on the left. Header in. Oh, what a super save by Crichton. Right at the death. How on earth has he kept that out? All the speculation about losing their manager seems to have brought out the best in Charlton. Off the bottom and now into the comfort zone. Carl Lieben's well-made, well-taken goal cheered up everyone at the Valley. And reading between the lines, it would appear Alan Kirbishley is going nowhere. At the moment. And what an end to the latest chapter in Dave Bassett's colourful career. His biggest win since he took over at Crystal Palace. <laughs> David Tuttle's header began the demolition. Reading felt there was a foul by striker Bruce Dyer there, but Doogie Friedman didn't wait for the whistle, and his shot seemed to surprise Bobby McKaylock, whose performance in the Reading goal was, to put it politely, rather eccentric. Five minutes into the second half, Mikhailov seemed to think Dyer's cross was going over the bar. Instead, it dipped under it, and fullback Kevin Muscat couldn't miss. A wonderful first-time pass from the outstanding Ray Houghton put Friedman away through the middle, a run ended by Barry Hunter's foul. Referee Steve Bennett stuck strictly to the rule book, ignored Hunter's complaints, and he was off. Dyer's penalty made it 4-0. It was five before Reading's ten men had reorganised. This time, Carl Vayet sprinted through the wide open spaces. Mikhailov didn't come to meet him until it was too late. The only stain on Bassett's afternoon was the sending off of defender Andy Roberts. Referee Bennett booked seven in all, but not Palace's debutant goalkeeper Carlo Nash, who bundled over Lee Nogan. Reading had to make do with Trevor Morley's penalty. At the finish, 300 fans called for the sacking of joint manager Jimmy Quinn. But Bassett could not be happier, and George Endar ran through to make it 6-1. So it's now four defeats running for Reading, but after conceding six to Crystal Palace last week, managers Jimmy Quinn and Mick Gooding were heartened by this performance. Andy Payton scored Huddersfield's winner, but for much of the second half, they did well to hang on to the three points. It's time one of my teams gave Reading a good stuffing, said Mark McGee going into this one. It only served to wind up his old club Reading, who dodged the punches and then struck with their own knockout. Here's Peter Brackley. Kasky. Slipped on for Lambert, now Morley. And it goes Lambert. Great shots, and he's taken it. Reading have the lead. 
Um, Reading's home form continues to undermine their hopes of rising up the table. They were in front when the Grimsby keeper Jason Piercy hesitated and then fouled Trevor Morley. Piercy might have been sent off earlier in the season. Even so, he couldn't stop Morley's penalty kick. But seven minutes from the end, Grimsby put together their best move of the match. Clive Mendonca gave Darren Rack the room to run in and the substitute couldn't have placed his shot better. 1-1. But there's no joy at Elm Park, where Lee Nogan knocks Coppel's men out of their stride with a double blast. That made it 1-0 at half-time, and midway through the second half, Nogan added Wedding second. But this time, there's no fight back, and City's hopes are ended when Steve Lomas is sent off eight minutes from time. that beat Crystal Palace away a week earlier and lost 2-1 at Old Trafford in midweek. Paul Allen coming in for Mark Seagraves. Striker Peter Thorne played despite breaking his nose in that match against United. Reading included two popular Swindon old boys, Paul Bodin and Jimmy Quinn. Robinson. Easy ball to Culverhouse. Long ball searches out Wayne Allison, uses his strength well to set up here, Mark Walters. And a good effort too from Walters, continuing his good form of late. Ball oh, beaten to it by Hunter. This is Bodin. Looking ball to Lambert and he puts Jilks away. Jilks loves to run at defenders, he's going to do just that. And forces a half-decent save out of Frank Tellier. Festival is out of defence by Culverhouse, picked up now though by Horlock and Leach. And captain play by Peter Thorne. Leach again. Good movement from Swindon as always. This is Culverhouse. And Thorne and forces a save out of Tommy Wright. A really good move from Swindon Town. And their fans enjoyed it too. Walters, good looking ball for Allison. that is mighty close from Wayne Allison. Swindon get the corner, just as the header came in, deflecting off Hunter's head behind. Elkins with the long ball, easily won by McPherson, Allison, and losing out to Mick Gooding, Lambert, a mistake. Allowing, well, Horlock should have picked up. He said, though, he feeds it straight through here for Jilts. Lambert's making a great run. Jilts goes all alone. And perhaps wishes he hadn't done. A really good chance, the best of a pretty drab first half. And Michael Jilts just taking it a little bit too far and then overstretching. Defensive work from Culverhouse, but Jilts is away again here. Another good chance for Jilts. Darris making a nuisance of himself and does really, really well. And a fairly comfortable save for Talia in the end. And what a handful Jilts really is. Well, he misses a long clearance completely. Darris also makes a meal of it. Morley goes down, and that is a penalty. Talia also goes down, but a little bit too late, I'm afraid, for Frank Talia. A certain penalty, ball really hitting Darris, who failed to clear in the first place. And absolutely no doubt at all that Talia grabbed the ankle. And luckily for him, receives only the yellow card. Morley against Talia. 1-0. Trevor Morley puts running ahead in this fiercely contested local derby. And what a superb penalty it was, Talia guessing right but right into the corner, no chance at all. O'Sullivan, flicked forward from Elkins, looking for Wayne Allison, Ferson gets it clear. Possible break on now for Reading, Swindon have got plenty of numbers up, this is Lambert, he's got Dills making a great run, this time it's Lambert's turn to go it alone, and may well have ruined it for Jilts. still though a decent ball, Nogan, 
And a good effort from Lee Nogan. And a good save again from Talia. Bowden right in front of his former manager. Morley laid on nicely here for Nogan. Oh, good save from Talia. Nogan hit it well and he hit it first time. And Talia pulled off the save. Here's Bowden. Here's Nogan again. And Talia again. Well, two excellent saves in the space of about five seconds. Nogan this time with the header. And at full stretch, very well tipped over. Corner comes in. Flicked on by Thorne, and it's Morley. 2 0. It was Thorne with the inadvertent flicked on header, and Morley simply couldn't miss from about six yards out. Less so, in fact, and he doubles Reading's lead. He's flick on from Morley. He's looking for his hat trick. Well, Dara stops him, not that he knew much about it. Here's Morley again. And Taya makes a save, still though the danger's not cleared, Darris eventually does so. And Taya in all sorts of bother at the moment. Keeping out Trevor Morley. Walters getting the better of Bowden, a superbly contested battle that's been this afternoon. And once again it's the former Swindon player that wins it. Really has played well for Bowden in front of his former boss. Allison fits on well. Thorne. It's too far for Allison. Horlock. Now Walters. That's a pretty good save, but he's had little to do all afternoon, Tommy Wright.
Both these teams hope for a playoff place, but worrying about relegation might be more realistic. Reading's bright start eventually brought them a goal five minutes into the second half from Lee Nogan. Southend's performance had lacked direction until their Danish midfielder John Nielsen triggered off a transformation. After Nielsen's spectacular equaliser, Reading began to wobble. Seven minutes later, a pinball session and Paul Williams' run panicked Barry Hunter into a clumsy foul. Mike Marsh put away the penalty and from then on, Southend were comfortable winners. Norwich desperately needed some reward from their home match against Reading midway through November. The match marked another milestone for Brian Gunn, his 450th senior appearance. But he was beaten 11 minutes into the second half. Trevor Morley with a firm header. The match was marred by a series of bookings and one red card. That was shown to Reading's Mick Gooding. He had the thankless task here of chasing the flying Darren Eady and could have few complaints when the referee sent him off for that ill-timed intervention. The free kick from Neil Adams came to nothing, but Norwich did finally equalise through Keith Scott. Scott was in good goal-scoring form at the time, three goals in six appearances, four of them as substitute. This time he'd been on the pitch for just a couple of minutes when he headed in Edie's free kick. A point for Norwich then from a one-all draw. Reading thought Scott had handled. The referee and Norwich had other ideas. Bus comes in. Uh, Rufus Brevett takes it away now for Queen's Park Rangers. Trevor Sinclair. It's a darting run from Trevor Sinclair. Oh, lovely little flick through. John Spencer! John Spencer! Oh, yes! His first goal for Queen's Park Rangers. Lovely strike from John Spencer. over and it's in there's a deflection it came off Danny Maddox here it's Michael Mika 2-1 ready so it's visitors Reading who get the game underway really good atmosphere inside the county ground today and we're looking forward to a great game between two sides who like to play football and taking charge this afternoon, referee Scott Matheson, who comes from Stockport. Walters seizing on the loose ball. And a corner for Swindon, first of the match. Reading busy organising themselves defensively, particularly on that near post area. Walters plays it in. Diving header and a goal for Swindon. Superbly finished by Kevin Horlock. And within six minutes, Swindon Town are ahead. Delight for the home fans and just the start you need after three successive defeats. And Kevin Horlock, who really does have a golden touch, gets his fifth of the season. Swindon looked to be working maybe a near post corner. In the end, it was a fairly straightforward ball into the box. Horlock dived low and planted the header beyond Tommy Wright. Jilks his cross. Morley with a header. It's the post, but Morley again with a rebound makes absolutely sure. It's 1-1, and Trevor Morley once again is the scourge of Swindon Town. Well, what a start to this game. It's really had everything so far. And Trevor Morley, who got both goals in the win at Elm Park early this season, returns to Horn Swindon. The first effort beat Digby, but couldn't beat the woodwork. The second, well, he made no mistake. Only 13 minutes played. Already we've got a cracking game on our hands. It's 1-1. Now, Kerslake again for Swindon, into feet for Walters. Sharp turn by him, Leach on for Allison. onside, Wayne Allison, 2-1 Swindon, and superbly done. That 
really was a quality goal. They just carved their way through the Reading defence. And Allison, with the coolest of finishes, makes it 2-1. And you just wonder where it's all going to stop. Morley's flick on. Nearly got through to Kasky. Lovell's there. Now Mika. Boss back in. Horlock's header clear. Swindon having to concentrate at the back. It's something they haven't done too well in recent weeks. And here come Reading again. Robinson's in the way. Elkins clears. Anxious moments for the home team and their supporters. Chance now for Kasky and Morley. Great save by Digby. Wonderful stop at point blank range. Perhaps lucky with the rebound but he deserved it for those instant reactions. Finney to O'Sullivan. Lovely super skills by him. Had to be a free kick. And astonished the referee's wave play on there, as O'Sullivan was clearly taken down. But look at Scott Leach winning it back for Swindon. Now here's Walters. Can he get in the shot? Lovely skills. Walters, 3-1, and it's all over. Superb finish by Mark Walters, who's doing himself a little lap of honour. Scott Leach was magnificent in winning possession to start that off, and when Walters got the chance, he jinked his way past the defender and buried the shot. It's his sixth goal of the season, it's 3-1 to Swindon, and that makes the points absolutely safe. It's always the same in a derby, everybody's up for it, it's all the fans want to win, they get a bit of banter between each other, and it was a good game, entertaining I think. Having said it was combative though, it, was, it wasn't dirty at any stage? Oh, no, not at all, I think now it's so hard to be dirty because the referees are on top of the game all the time. I think it was a fair game and I think the two managers would be delighted with that. Good win for Swindon, I know what I thought because I was there, but what's your view of it, Russell, first of all? Well, it's nice for them to get back on the, the winning ways. Uh, three straight defeats away from home, um, the back at home, they got the three points. Hopefully it gets them back on the winning ways again. Some good goals in there, but uh, I think you've highlighted a moment of skill that you want to tell us about, and uh, particularly yeah. one that the guy's been there playing with for about 15 years, you reckon? Yeah, well, Mark Walters, I, I mean, Scott Leach wins the ball terrifically there for him. He knocks it to, to Mark Walters here. Now the four really has got to try and get to him before the edge of the box. There's his step over, past the defender and in. As we're doing that step over trick, ever since he started to make his name in the game at Aston Villa. It's it, simple but effective, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean all kids should be taught this when they start being coached. Steps over the ball now, right foot over the ball, takes a wider with his left and in. It just creates half a yard of space for him and a good finish across the keeper. Great goal. And Swindon winning ways again. They obviously, as you said, needed a win there. How do you see their season picking up from there? Because they're not quite in that promotion zone at the moment. No, but they're, they're quite handily placed at the moment. Uh, there's a long way to go yet. Uh, they needed the win yesterday. That gives them a, a bit of uh, momentum to start going into the Christmas period, you know, through into the new year. Good evening and welcome from the Pulse Stadium, Valley Parade, the home of Bradford City. Their visitors tonight are Reading all the way from uh, down in Berkshire in their familiar blue and white but, uh, horizontal stripes. The game should have been played on Saturday but due to the fact that Reading had uh, a couple of players in the Irish squad and I think one or maybe two in the, in the Welsh squad, the, uh, the game was rearranged for tonight so naturally a lot of the Reading fans weren't be, wasn't able to travel down uh, all the way from there tonight, but uh, there's still the Bradford fans in, in full voice. But come Boxing Day, a different matter. So it's Reading to kick off, playing from left to right. That was Stuart Lovell committing that dastardly deed in front of the cop as Steiner now trying to get away from McPherson to Waddle. Morn on the far side, 
knocks it forward towards Duxbury with a good challenge by Bernal. Waddle now, back to Waddle. To Jacobs, a great ball by Waddle. Jacobs on the near touchline, swings the ball in. Chance! Starley! So lucky! Tremendous move! And Wayne Jacobs clearing in the corner, and I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't argue with that one because Steiner rising at that far post, got a solid header in, and I think it's got a deflection, but... Waddle. To D Jacobs. Can Jacobs pick anybody out? Far post. Duxbury! Well, Tommy Rivers in the right... Probably in the right place. He must be with a name like that. Uh, again, a marvellous cross-field ball from Waddle, picking out Wayne Jacobs. Jacobs then picked out Lee Duxbury, but uh, unfortunately, Tommy Wright picked out Lee Duxbury's header, so everybody picked each other up there. Good in to Jilts. Cowan's just did enough to stop that ball going anywhere dangerous. Steiner now loses control and gets robbed by Williams. Good in again. Started off. Another move for Reading. Swales. Got Williams on his outside, gives the ball to Williams. Williams with an early cross. Mohan has Swalsey. Didn't get over that ball, he waited for it, he was caught on his heels there. And a let off there for Bradford. Mohan, thankfully, on the line to clear it. Good in towards Lovell. Morley now edge of the box. Back to Lovell. Well, there's no claim by a Reading forward. I thought that got a slight deflection, but uh, that shot from Lovell wide of the target. Well, Stuart Lovell, he's under 86 games for Reading, has scored 52 times, but so far this season he hasn't found the target. So let's hope that he uh, doesn't break his duck. Chrissy Waddle may have just got bundled over in the penalty area, which may have got a penalty we've seen. Our keeper mishandled a couple of balls, but we've not seen too much penalty area action as Steiner now. To Jacobs as Lee Duxbury once again on his own, she's in, in midfield. As Dreyer plays this ball out to uh, Jacobs, but again, a lot of blue and white shirts covering. A back header there by Sundot. Waddle, first time ball to Hamilton. Finds Hamilton, but unfortunately, it comes off the right foot of Hamilton and goes out for a throw. Lee Duxbury certainly looking in some discomfort now, taking another whack on that right ankle. Have to be some uh, work by Steve Redmond at half time as Hamilton now coming inside, tries a shot. Well, Tommy Wright had to have two goals at him before he finally controlled it. Des Hamilton came inside on his left foot. Hammered a shot towards goal, but Tommy Wright blocked it. And there's the half-time whistle here at the Pool Stadium Valley Parade. But it's Chrissy Waddle now coming in. So, uh, cause a bit of mayhem in the Reading penalty area with this in-swinging corner. Ooh, at the top of the wall. Well, I think it was the Stanton at the back. Too much swing on that. Jacobs, Waddle turns, turns again to Jacobs. No foul, says the referee. 9.8 for the dive, he says, as Red Reddy now break away. Danger signs for Bradford. They've got to be careful of this, looking for this winner. Jilts, lost his shot once again. The referee explains to Wayne Jacobs, you did a dive, my boy. As Lambert takes his kick, swings it in. Keeper punches it away, not really too convincingly. Steiner can't stop it from going out at this side and almost knocks our pitch side cameraman over. Ball quickly turned to Gooding. Gooding knocks it in. Ooh, not too far away, Morley twisting his head there, his neck just flashed it wide of uh, Mark Swarza's left-hand post. Oh. 
Punched away by the keeper. And as far as Lambert tries a volley. And this time, that was better angling by the keeper. Not looked too happy with the, the balls in the area tonight, but took that firmly and confidently. After Norwich Crystal Palace last week, here's Mass Brawl 2. Portsmouth's Matthias Svensson and Reading's Barry Hunter started it. Everyone else carried on the confrontation. Hunter and Svensson were sent off. And it was an entertaining match. Four goals, the first of them after just three minutes for Paul Pesky Solido, who of course has now gone to Fulham on a £1 million plus deal. So that was 1-0 to the Albion. But Reading had a good home record last season. As I said, only three home defeats throughout it. A rather lazy equaliser from Lee Nogan in the eighth minute. Albion were back in front before half-time. Paul Groves. But in the second half, Jimmy Quinn popped up with the equaliser 17 minutes from time. Oxford United waved goodbye to 96 with the goal of the day. One of the goals of the whole year. There's been lots of good things to cheer at the manor and Joey Beecham's run will go down as one of the best bits of football. The Yellows could have hit five. Reading were never in with a shout and Paul Moody could have scored a hat-trick before half-time. Nine thousand two hundred and twenty-three packed in for the game, and nine thousand two hundred and twenty-three would have reckoned on scoring here. And about 6,000 or so would have fancied their chances again, minutes later. United got it right in the second half when Matt Murphy made it 2-0 and this turned out to be the win. Reading came back on the whistle with a goal from Trevor Morley. 2-1 doesn't do the game justice. When referee Graham Paul inspected the Elm Park pitch yesterday, he deemed it playable. And after a second check today, he kept to that view. Not everyone was happy with the decision, though there were plenty of smiles from Reading when James Lambert put them ahead in the first half. After the interval, Southampton looked similarly sure-footed in equalising. Eil Berkovic opened the way to goal for Egil Ostenstadt. It was the Norwegians' seventh goal of the season. As in other games recently, the Saints were having enough of the ball to impose themselves, but they do keep conceding bad goals. There'll certainly be an inquest into this one, excellent though Darren Kasky's finish was. The game was settled a quarter of an hour from the end. Francis Bernardi on the far side of the area clashed with Trevor Morley. Mr Pohl moved in, produced the red card and left no doubt that an elbow was the cause. Bernardi's record won't help him, it was his third dismissal this season. Morley himself took the penalty, 3-1 to Reddy. That, though, was still not the end of Southampton's woeful afternoon. Robbie Slater chased the ball down the line, seemingly content to let it go out of play. But the assistant referee's flag suggested that something had been said, and when Mr Pohl was called in to administer justice, it was another red card. Foul and abusive language, the only possible explanation. Southampton left with nine players and a seething manager. When we met the referee this morning, I, I told him I didn't think the pitch, the, the pitch was fit to play on. He came out with two incredible statements. One he said, well, it's just like a pitch in August. Another one he said, well, it'd be OK if the players just go at 90%. I said, but it's an FA Cup tie. He said, but it's OK if they just go at 90%, which I found incredible. The, the pitch was hard, but um, as we said at the referee, that you know we didn't think it was a great deal of difference from playing it on, on a pitch like this now. 
than sometimes you get near the end of the season when the sun's baked it for a month. And Mick Gooding would have swapped this result for last week's surprise cup win over Southampton. Reading began well and scored one of the weekend's best goals, volleyed in by youngster Martin Williams. But the most experienced player on the pitch was not having a good day. Bulgarian goalkeeper Bobby Mikhailov is closing in on 100 caps for his country, but since arriving in England, he's hardly been Mr. Consistent. Mikhailov's hesitation allowed Kevin Lisby to score his first ever league goal. Only for Charlton's goalkeeper Andy Pedersen to drop his own clangor six minutes later. James Lambert did the formalities. But Mikhailov still had one big mistake left to make. What should have been a routine clearance turned into a slapstick routine. Striker David White still had to be precise with his finish. This week, White and Charlton head up to Newcastle, aiming for an FA Cup shock. We've done it before. To St Andrews, where the commentator is Peter Brackley. Furlong's the target. Did well to get his header into. Can't help me, Hylock. That's Brown and Furlong. And Birmingham at last have the lead. Grove has ambled forward. Bernal in there too, and McPherson. That was Bruce, didn't really clear. Driven back in by Horsgrove. Up goes Furlong, surely handled. It's a penalty. McPherson. Devlin against Mihailov, and he scores emphatically. Birmingham back in front. Now it's Johnson prodded forward for Furlong. That's Granger's cross for Devlin! Super goal! Ambit as usual on the near post. Bruce to attack further back. Devlin! And it's gone in! Good luck at own goal. Substitute Matthias Svensson for this win. He came on midway through the second half and instantly changed Pompey's fortunes. Setting up Paul Hall for the opener after 68 minutes. But there was more to come from the big Swede. A few minutes later, he sent Lee Bradbury on his way to scoring Portsmouth's number two. He'd only been on the park for 10 minutes, but Svensson had already made two vital goals. And Svensson, who started on the bench after recovering from an ankle injury, also played a part in the third, putting Fitzroy Simpson into space on the left his cross eventually falling to David Hillier, who scored his first goal for Portsmouth since signing from Arsenal. So Portsmouth safely through to the last 16. You now go to Reading on the back of a, a good result at Oldham, having to make changes. Tom McCown, I think, is suspended at this time. I think we made another change, but we got off to a great start. Simon Ball down the left-hand side, crossed a great ball with the outside of his right foot. Andy Payton in the right place with a nice little header. And then, as is our one through most of the season, we just choose now to uh, sit back and defend it again for some reason. We started off so well, until we score, we're attacking. Now we start to defend. And I think that might have been a, a little bit of a let-off. And then Kevin Gray, for some reason, has let him run across him. It's a, it's a definite penalty, but it's, it's frustrating because we've just sat back and defended. You know, when you go in front, good sides go on, we, we tend to get in front and think we're going to sit back and defend everything for, for however long it is. And Franny's unlucky here, it goes the right way, he's very good on penalties, Franny. Unfortunately, it falls straight back to Morley, who had a little, a little task of, of just nodding it in. And then two set pieces in the space of minutes, free header. Can't give people free headers. And then again from another corner from the same side, I think he's the same person who might have been marking. And uh, he's got a free header again. But it, somebody's made a great save on the, on the line, but it comes out. And um, when we go 3 1, virtually a game set and match. And we're just, again, we're just surviving at this time again. It's what we were, Jekyll and I, totally well beaten again at this time. And uh, that's the frustrating part. Franny's a bit unlucky, it comes out and has it straight to him. It's a great finish. That's the way, that's the way we were getting punished a little bit. But uh, that's why I think at this time, that, uh... We could take in Tranmere back into the top six, but they can't consolidate that position. Despite taking an early lead when Graham Branch converted Tony Thomas's cross, John Aldridge saw his side make too many mistakes at the back. 
Reading might have one of the poorest away records in the division, but in Trevor Morley, they have a striker who will punish errors and who will cash in on good fortune. Two minutes into the second half, Morley got behind John McGreal and then ran beyond goalkeeper Eric Nixon into an offside position with only one defender between him and the goal. But there was no flag and Morley made it 2-1. Reading's defence couldn't hold out, however. 18 minutes from the end, Paul Cook's header was blocked, but Ian Moore popped up Aldo style. Part-time goalkeeper, Jimmy Quinn took over at the start of the second half in place of the injured Bobby Mikhailov, but it was Bolton who were unsettled. Trevor Morley's wonderful turn on the edge of the area bemused Jerry Taggart and triggered an amazing spell of five goals in 15 minutes. Quinn has helped out in goal before, but he couldn't repeat last season's clean sheet against West Brom. Alan Thompson's shot on the run would have beaten most. But at the other end, Bolton's defence, ripped apart by Chesterfield four days earlier, was suffering again. Taggart's trip on Michael Meeker gave Reading an immediate restoration chance. Morley made it 17 for the season but that's still seven behind John McGinley, the division's top scorer and the last person Quinn needed to be facing in a one-on-one. -on -one. But this was Reading's day and it ended in a vital win, sealed by 35-year-old Morley's hat-trick. If he carries on playing like that, we'll have to give him a new contract, said Quinn afterwards. Suddenly, Reading have discovered how to score again. The return of striker Stuart Lovell after injury is a factor. Only Norwich have conceded as many goals away from home as Southend, but Ronnie Whelan wound up his side at half-time, and Jerome Bohr scored with a crisp header. Now it was toe-to-toe -to -toe stuff. Reading landed the next punch. Morley had the vision, and once away there was no stopping Michael Jilks. But Southend were making just as many chances. When Phil Gridlett headed down, Bora blasted in his second. Not enough to stop Southend's rot on their away travels. 15 minutes from time, Gilt's cross was a real beauty, and Morley was there to win it. Just below the playoff zone, two points behind Palace at Port Vale. A single goal enough to beat Reading. Toby Naylor right at half time, and only he knows what the celebration meant. Trevor Morley won't score many better than this one. Back to goal, his overhead kick was superbly struck. Morley is the division's leading scorer in league matches and this was his 20th of the season. Norwich, though, quickly drew level when keeper Steve Mortone brought down Darren Eady. Neil Adams slotted home the penalty. And Eady nearly gave Norwich the lead soon afterwards. Reading saved by the post. After the change round, Michael Jilts was just wide with this effort. And then Morley thought he'd got his second of the match, but Kevin Scott headed clear. With just four minutes remaining, Reading won the match with a bizarre own goal. Martin Williams broke clear on the right, and Adams, who'd got the equaliser for Norwich, sent his team crashing to defeat. We're on a nice little run at the moment. Uh, you know, we, we are looking to get uh, around 55 points to, to make sure we stay in this division. And of course, anything after that, then, as a bonus, you know, we're looking to probably get another four wins out of 12 matches. And if we can do that, we'll certainly be safe. Listen, big man. Morley's there! And in the second minute of the match, readying the visitors, have taken the lead. Kasky back to Bernal. Oh, and that's a spectacular own goal. Well, that just about sums up Rangers' luck this evening as the ball comes off the head of poor Danny Maddox. And there's Andrew O'Brien immediately making his presence felt on the uh, 
Reading manager, or should we say the dual manager yet? Both managers are playing today, both Mick Gooding and uh, Mickey Quinn. Both been tremendous servants to to Reading. O'Brien. Pepper, first time ball wide for Jacobs. Good bit of possession by Bradford. Sun got looking round. Get some support off Murray. Murray inside the area. Good play by Sean Murray now. And beaten away by the keeper. Tremendous work from Sean Murray. Tremendous build up. Ball switched from the right to the left. A link up there with Murray. Got in the area and it was a, a good save by the uh, Aussie keeper. Tremendous volley from Sean Murray. Turned away by the, the keeper. Sun got. This is Kasky getting taken out of it by uh, Gluskar now. Adino tries a shot, good effort. And once again, as the keeper scrambling about, good left foot shot from the Brazilian. And once again, the keeper having to dive to his right to keep that shot out. Reading have, the, have its favour at the moment as that ball holding in the wind. Cast, uh, Luscar has chance for Jacobs now. Slides it in and it's cleared by Gooding. A challenge by McPherson. Just did enough for Wayne Jacobs. A neat little flick putting through. Wayne Jacobs just put off enough by McPherson and the ball cleared for a corner by Mick Gooding. So another chance. Lybird. It's uh, played forward by Jilks. Moen with the volley. The ball holding up in the wind. Will it get through to the keeper? He's got to come out and edit. Chance for Adino. Tries a shot. Oh, lucky. Tremendous effort from Adino. And if that had been on target, well, what an embarrassment it would have been. The keeper off his line as the ball held up. That could be the danger for Bradford in the uh, second half. But Adino showing tremendous vision there. Almost putting the ball in between the two white posts. So unlucky, Adino, there, not to put Bradford in the lead in the 39th minute. Pepper. It's the ball across. Sungot. Oh, lucky. Beautiful run by Pepper. Sungot. Near post. Flicks on and it landed on the roof of the net. And it's two, uh, two Reading players on the ground there. The uh, Steve Redmond, the Bradford trainer, I'm sure, will come on and look after one of them. Not quite sure who's down, but both of them there. Clyde in trying to stop Sungot. To Kasky. Tries a shot blocked by Andrew O'Brien. Jilts, and that's another good block from Moen as ready now, putting the pressure on the Bradford defence. Oh! What a let off. The keeper came, didn't carry on for it. And that header, well, it says in the textbook, you've got to head it down. But that header from Morley bounced high over the bar. Thankfully for Bradford, that would have been a cruel piece of, uh, well, bad luck if that had gone in. And escape for Bradford, the only real serious threat that they've had. Reading have had 11 number one since Shaka Hislop left for Newcastle. But Michael Jilks's handball gave Steve Mortone a chance to increase his popularity. Mortone is on loan from West Ham. But Reading want to sign the goalkeeper permanently and this penalty save felt even better in injury time. Mick Gooding and then substitute Lee Nogan battled it out on the edge of the area. And Stuart Lovell, a striker struggling for form, swept in a winner that's a setback for Ipswich. The regret of the night for Reading fans lay with Mick Gooding. The Royals player manager struck the post just before half-time, the visitors' best chance at Fratton Park. The Pompey faithful were ruining the referee's decision on Andy Bernal. The Reading defender escaped a sending off after colliding with Portsmouth's Paul Hall. Both sides held out stubbornly and the score remained nil-nil.
Portsmouth almost broke the deadlock here. But with six minutes to go, Alan McLaughlin's corner confused the Reading defence and Hall scored his 11th of the season. Portsmouth won, Reading nil, a playoff place is in sight for Pompey. Million pound signing John Everill made his home debut against Reading. It was a bittersweet start, Everill forcing an own goal, but then leaving the field injured. That's a good turn and a good ball in, and it's an own goal. United won't mind. Through it goes, and this could be danger here. And a chance for Reading. Charge down on the line. Good defending that by United. Always won the header. Chance here. Shot by Walker. And Andy Walker's made it number two. Gachuro steaming into the area, Gachuro pulls it back, chance for White off the bar from the volley and it rattled on the line. Mitch Ward chooses to go left footed, it's a good cross and there's the header and for the second time United have hit the crossbar. The Reds' marvellous away form continued with a 2-1 win against Reading at Elm Park. The team, spurred on by a large Barnsley contingent, who had made the long journey south on Easter Bank Holiday Monday. seconds into the game the Stoke goalkeeper Carl Muggleton made a mess of his first touch of the ball but Reading's James Lambert didn't lobbing Muggleton and an overexposed defense and putting a big hole in Stoke's playoff ambitions they really had to win this one according to manager Lou Macari but attacking quality and chances were at a premium Reading's stubborn defense was only prized open by Richard Forsyth He's used to getting at Elm Park, but his latest signing was also in for a tough time. Michael Jilk spent 13 years with Reading. This was his first trip back in a different shirt. After a slow first half, it was Reading who dominated the opening minutes of the second. Darren Caskey missing the first opportunity. Royals were without two of their strikers, so both Reading managers started and revived their playing partnership. Although Jimmy Quinn should have salvaged something from this chance. With Wolves gunning for promotion and Reading's pride at stake, it was always going to be a physical match. When Mick Gooding brought down Michael Jilks, Wolves demanded he go. The referee didn't agree. Then, in the 75th minute, the visitors took the lead. Darren Ferguson's corner was nodded in by Mark Atkins, delighting the fans and firing up the manager. But Jilks had to be stretched off after suffering several hard tackles. By now, Wolves thought they'd finally avenge their defeat by Reading back in October, but Stuart Lovell had other ideas. In the 90th minute, he volleyed in the equaliser and then achieved hero status, scoring the winner in injury time. Final score, Reading 2, Wolves 1. I was just waiting for a chance that would give me a run in the side, so hopefully if I can stay in the last few games of the season, get a few more goals, that will help for next season. You and Michael Jilks had a bit of a clash. What happened? Um... Well, I've always been a little bit quicker than Michael. Um, I've basically, I, I, I've missed time to chat. I thought I got the ball. Uh, obviously, I, I've taken Michael out of the game. I, I apologise to him afterwards. It wasn't anything malicious. It's just a, it was a desperate tackle to get the ball because if I hadn't have got the ball, he'd have, he'd have been uh, long gone. Grimsby manager Kenny Swain gave the V for victory sign before this match, and his players responded to that rallying call with a slick, confident performance and two fine goals. 
The first from Nicky Southall, and the second to go with their dominance from Tommy Widrington. Again, neat football made it possible, and Widrington's shot was too good for Steve Morton. Even better for Grim. Rogers corner. Linegan's header, great goal, Andy Linegan. He's worth a few each season from set pieces. Houghton prodding it through, Dyer's there. Who's Dyer, likes to send it out wide. And get the cross and Hopkins there with a header. And David Hopkins has done it again for Palace. Good challenge. A shot driven in first time and a goal. And no chance for Nash from that. Shipperley again. Neil Shipperley. A good crossfield ball. Here's Dyer. And Gordon's on the overlap. Dean Gordon pulls it back and it's a goal. Touched in by Neil Chipperley. Shipley again looking for his second of the match. Good stop by the keeper. Houghton. And that'll be picked up by the keeper. Oh, it's a good build up, good move. And a fine goal. It's in the back of the net. On the verge. Reading, he's still ruled out by injury. And Blues fans spend much of the match chanting for their hero to sign a new contract. Good work by Mika. Bought a little bit of space for himself. It's Michael Mika. Oh, he took a deflection off for Goldrick and it's gone in. And Reading have scored in the very first minute. <laughs> Will be Kasky. Nardison happy to see that fly wide. Simon's up well. Dickoff with the overhead. Rosler! Really good work by Paul Dickoff. After Simon's header had looped towards him. And Russell caught a little bit by surprise, I think. Bowden's free kick. There's Lovell, good save. It's in though, I think Kid Simons might actually have got the touch. It was an excellent stop by Margerson, but Simons just couldn't hook it away. to Somerby. They seem to be caught then by Bowden, who's having his shirt pulled. And then eventually the fullback had a hack at it and failed to get the ball. Somerby takes. Dick off! Oh, they lost him completely. No marking at all at the near post. Keeper helped it over. McGoldrick's corner. Simons, Dickov, yes! Paul Dickov, with a little over 10 minutes of the half remaining. He got himself in front of Bowden and was able to cotton on to Kit Simons' header. Yes, he back to Bowden. 
a useful cross two towards Lovell. And Roach is close again here. And Horlock happy to hook the ball away. Difficult moment that for City. They've had a few. And by Mika. Now Summerby. Clipped in towards Rizla. And straight out the goalkeeper. With the try and Rizla! And Manchester City are on terms. Jed Brunner's effort. Well stopped really by Moore Turner, but Rizla was quickly in. Take by Herlock. Brunner's header. Heaney surely. And at last, Manchester City go in front. Just 12 minutes remaining. Jed Brannan with the header. Keeper did remarkably well. And Heaney, after the ball had bounced over him, eventually tucked in what may be the winner. A brilliant.